So uh, thank you for coming here. I will talk about Postgres, uh, Postgres scale protocol gateway for, for Presto. Hacking Postgres scale internals to solve data access problems. Uh, let me explain about myself first. So my name is Sadayuki Furuhashi. Uh, I have a GitHub, GitHub account and Twitter account called FRS YTI. And I'm a founder of a company called Twitter Data. And I'm also an open source hacker. So here's the list of open source projects I started. Uh, have you heard about this message pack project? Great, thank you very much. Uh, so this is, uh, this is like JSON, but binary based. So faster and more compact. And next one, Flindy, is a low collection, low collection tool. So if you think about syslogd, it's similar, but Flindy can support JSON as a log format and uh, collect data from a, a lot of places using plugins. So collect logs from applications, files, or uh, apart servers, uh, that kind of things. And then put also output plugins. <coughs> and Mbulk is similar to Flindy in terms of architecture, but more for batch oriented. So you have uh, hundreds of gigabytes of CSV files. On Amazon S3, for example, uh, run, run Mbulk to load them in parallel and dump it everything to Postgres scale, Oracle, Salesforce, that kind of things, using plugins. So those are the open source projects. And as a, uh, as a company, uh, I, found it, I found this company called Toria Data. We provide a cloud-based uh, data analytics infrastructure. So we collect data using Flindy and Embolk, and store them on our cloud-based database, and provide data, data analytics. And then you can get those visualizations. And actually, the problem is here. Uh, we provide a data analytics platform, uh, but this platform did not have ODBC connectivity before. I wanted to build an open source ODBC connectivity directly connected to the big data analytics platform. So this figure is the same with this. And then this is very typical architecture of big data analytics. So people have data on distributed storages, such as HDFS or Amazon S3 or Google Cloud for Platform. And we, they use Hive, uh, which is based on Hadoop MapReduce, to run SQL queries. Then, uh, in this case, uh, original data is often cases schemaless and unstructured, such as just lines of tickets. But this query converts it into structured format and joins with other data sources such as user information and log files, then uh, dump the aggregated results into PostgreSQL. This is a very typical architecture. Then use dashboard applications or BI tool to visualize those data. But here's the big problem. So first of all, uh, <coughs> this batch analysis platform scales well, but uh, <coughs> slow for interactive queries. So in batch data analytics, uh, we need to handle uh, hundreds of, of gigabytes of data per day. So to, to handle those amount of data, uh, uh, traditional databases does not scale well. So we need to use the, uh, this kind of distributed oriented tools. However, uh, if you run a query in Hive, it compiles a SQL into Java program and distributes into servers and stores a JVM and then starts a new pro process and so it takes time. <laughs> only to start a query. So <laughs> one query uh, usually takes at least one minute to start. So it doesn't work for interactive queries. On the other hand, once we put data to Postgres scale, it works for interactive queries. However, because this batch query runs only every day or every hour, there's a uh, <coughs> gap between the live data ingestion and actual availability to the visualization tool. So the data, if you visualize the data, it's already old. We, we want to get fresh data. And also in terms of operation of this system, we need to handle, we need to manage two systems, bot systems and visualization systems. It's too much extra work. So I wanted to convert this architecture to like this. So Hive is, this was designed for uh, batch queries. And there is another tool created by Facebook called Presto. This tool 
also can scale for petabytes of data, but can support also interactive queries. If you run query, it returns the results in several seconds. <coughs> of course, it depends on the data, but uh, designed for interactive queries. And with this architecture, we need to manage only one infrastructure. It's a bit much easier. The another good thing of Presto is that uh, we can join several data sets. So, for example, access logs or uh, time series data is on HDFS. And Cassandra stores uh, session logs or other <laughs> other impression logs, those kind of things. And PostgreSQL stores user data. And Kafka stores some other streams. Presto can read data from those data sets and join across them and then return the results. This architecture is very useful for data analytics. So the problem is here. Uh, commercial VA tools usually need ODBC or JDBC to connect to the database. Uh, Presto has an uh, early version of ODBC connectivity, but in most of the cases, it doesn't work with uh, existent BI tools. It's not mature yet. So the idea is this. We put, I put Presto Grace there and provide ODBC connectivity to BI tools. So this is the today's topic. <clears throat> so before going to, into Presto Gross internals, uh, I think we have this question. Why do you choose Presto over other databases? There are a lot of databases such as uh, CitusDB, of course, a Green Plum, uh, Park Cell, and PP databases. But I choose uh, Presto. Uh, to explain about that, uh, I will explain about the architecture of Presto. So this is an uh, overview of Presto architecture. So there are three types of servers. One is called discovery service server, one is called worker server, and one is called coordinate server. This discovery server is, provi uh, is providing uh, information about uh, location of those servers. So coordinator finds worker servers through discovery servers. So worker notifies its location, uh, registers its location to uh, this, this uh, discovery service, and the coordinator knows it. And the coordinator first receives queries from clients uh, using HTTP protocol. Then compiles it into query plan and distributes the tasks to workers. And when coordinator compiles a query into tasks, it uses connector plugin to get metadata. Metadata means list of tables and scheme of them. And then uh, coordinator distributes the task into uh, workers, and workers process the query. Here, uh, worker also uses connector plugins. Connector plugins are their libraries within Java. And then through connector plugins, worker gets data from storages. So this means that we can plug in a lot of uh, uh, any kinds of data sources. Worker also communicates each other to process distributed algorithms, such as distributed join, distributed group by. Then finally, uh, one worker generates uh, the final result and the client fetches it. So yeah, this is the architecture. So connectors is a very important point of Presto. So connectors are plugins of Presto. So they are open source plugins available on, on the web. And connector provides a metadata and data to Presto. So uh, connector reads table schema uh, from, uh, and connector provides table schema to coordinators and provides actual table rows into workers. Uh, example implementations are Hive connector, uh, Cassandra connector, JDBS connector, and Kafka connector. So Hive connector reads data from HDFS. Uh, JDBC connector can use uh, other databases, such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, uh, VertiShift even, uh, to scan data from that. And the interesting thing is that uh, we can use multiple connectors in a single query. So scan from, uh, select from Hive, join with PostgreSQL and other data sets. So with this way, uh, <coughs> with this architecture, uh, Presto can join other data sets. So this architecture, how is this architecture different from 
uh, for example, Postgres Excel. So I, I used Postgres Excel as an, just an example. Uh, <coughs> traditional MPP databases uh, have very similar architecture with Postgres Excel. So in Postgres Excel, uh, it re coordinator receives the query and distributes the query into worker instances. And worker instances have data in it. And data is partitioned probably by data, uh, probably by uh, timestamp or hash. So according to that, coordinator distributes the query to optimize the performance. On the other hand, Presto itself does not store data at all. They depend, it depends on external databases. So storage management is separated from computation performance. This is good to add servers or remove servers because those servers are stateless. Adding just one instance improves the performance and we don't have to redistribute those data. On the other hand, uh, Postgres Excel architecture is better for transaction operations such as inserting, updating those data because the data is in actual worker instances. So Postgres Excel has a server called Transaction Manager, which manages a transaction ID for each query and provides MVCC access. Presto does not have transaction at all. It's designed only for a batch operation, batch select, batch update, batch delete. So the, the reason is because Presto is more elastic. Adding server is easy, removing server is easy. And this is very good for cloud-based infrastructure. Actually, our infrastructure as a company is built on top of Amazon, Amazon EC2. So we, need, we can uh, scale up or scale down the servers only when we need. Even shutting down a cluster is easy because data is not there, just shut, shut down. And uh, when, when, only when we need the computation, create a new cluster and run query. And because data is not on those worker instances, uh, we don't have to move the data when we scale the cluster or shut down the cluster. This is very good for cloud-based infrastructure. By the way, uh, there's another uh, batch-oriented data processing system called Hadoop. Hadoop uses MapReduce, as you know. And Presto is very different from MapReduce, in fact. So in MapReduce, uh, operation is compiled into Map and Reduce. And the Map phase uh, distributes data, or uh, hash the data, and put the, everything into distributed storage, like HDFS. Then Reduce the runs. Reduce the do some aggregation again, then put everything to HDFS. The map Reduce, Map Reduce, this phases. On each stages, there is a, there's a lot of data access, writing to disk. And unless all map tasks finish, reduce task doesn't start. So there's a big latency here. That's the reason why uh, Hive does not work well for interactive queries. On the other hand, Presto communicates with other workers only in memory. So as it, as a, as a, as a node of uh, AST generates some records, it forces the records into next stage. The next stage, I will use the data, and next forces the next stage, and then finally client fetches the data. Actually, fetching result from worker happens even during running the query, because uh, they run concurrently. Okay, so this, is, uh, this was uh, introduction, actually. So I explained why I use Presto. Now I talk about Presto-Glass, which is ODBC connectivity to Presto. So again, the problem is ODBC and JDBC connectivity. Uh, Tableau, IBM Cognos, ClickView, Artrata.io, they need ODBC. Jasper Soft, Penta for other products, Java-based products need JDBC. And they are very complicated. If you see uh, source code of Postgres scales ODBC client, it includes 58,000 lines in C. It's actually compact compared to MySQL. MySQL Java database connector includes 101,000 lines in Java. So open sourcing this implementation will take a lot of time. So in fact, there's another solution. Uh, we can 
ask some companies to build ODBC or JDBC drivers. We need to pay for that, but they will create it. However, if we do that, we cannot open source the results. That's partially because all this uh, implementation is hard and we need to pay. But uh, another reason is that apparently they have uh, sort of assets which, com which converts complicated ODBC or a uh, JDBC API to a simpler API. Then they will implement a simpler API. So that's why we can, they can uh, create a lot of drivers, variety of drivers easily. However, this conversion part is sort of a core asset for them, so we cannot open source it. I wanted to build open source solution. So that's why I created Postgres. The approach is to create a Postgres scale protocol gateway server. It means that Postgres implements a Postgres scale protocol. So client connects to Postgres as uh, using Postgres protocol. However, internally, it runs Postgres query. Doesn't run Postgres scale. That's the architecture. With this way, we can reuse existent Postgres scales clients. Any clients can run Presto queries. And as a result, uh, this is an example of a BI tool. This is a, a product called Chart.io. This is a web-based BI tool, which uses ODBC. <clears throat> this directory connects to Presto and runs uh, queries using Postgres scale protocol. There were some other possible design options. One was MySQL protocol plus libdrizzle. Libdrizzle is, uh, first of all, Drizzle is a project forked from MySQL. And they built a very good library, well-designed library called libdrizzle. It includes a library which to, to implement MySQL protocol. So I used that library to implement MySQL protocol gateway. Actually, proof of concept worked. Uh, this server receives queries from MySQL clients and run the query on Hive, not Press. There's a reason. Uh, when MySQL clients connect to a server using MySQL protocol, they assume that the server is MySQL. However, it is not. So MySQL uses a syntax which is slightly different from ANSYS standard. So for example, a uh, quoting identifier is back quote, but Postgres and Presto use double quotation. Hive is more similar to MySQL's uh, syntax or behavior. So this proof of concept for Hive worked, but didn't work for Presto. Another de design choice was uh, foreign data wrapper. So using foreign data wrapper, we can plug in uh, data scan node to Postgres scale. But this also didn't work because uh, foreign data pro doesn't support join and aggregation pushdown mm. yet, maybe. <coughs> uh, this means that uh, foreign data pro can get where conditions and push down into the actual storage. So for example, if a query has where time equals A, then uh, storage can read, storage needs to read only time equals A. Because that's, that is possible because this information is pushed down to foreign data, foreign data plugin from Postgres scale. However, join and aggregation information, group by information, are not pushed down to uh, foreign data part. So if we run a uh, select count from something, and group by something, foreign data part needs to scan the records, and then Postgres scale process the aggregation. But this is not good for Presto integration because we want, to, we want to run the aggregation in distributed servers. Uh, I heard that next version, or next, next version, or next, next, next version will support this kind of pushdown, but at least now it is not available. Okay, so then uh, I decided to use uh, Postgres skip protocol implementation. So there are difficulties to do this. Uh, one is emulating system catalogs. So as you know, uh, table schema and functions, other metadata is stored on system catalogs. PG class, PG namespace, PG proc, etc. Et Those are regular tables. But uh, it means that uh, without emulating those actual tables, 
clients cannot get metadata. So there are no special protocol to get metadata. The clients just select from those system catalogs. But those system catalog tables does, don't exist on Prest, of course. So I needed to emulate those tables somehow. The, another thing is transaction. Begin and commit is not supported in Presto. So somehow I need to hack that. So this is the solution I used to solve those problems. So use PG pool tool and PostgreSQL plus PL Python. So PG pool tool is a middleware which provides a replication failover load balancing to PostgreSQL. So this already implements PostgreSQL protocol and it has some useful functions in it already. So such as parsing SQL, rewriting SQL, or detecting system catalog axes. They are implemented already in PG Pool 2. And on PostgreSQL, we can run functions defined in Python. So we can use Python code to define uh, functions. So the idea is this. So PG Pool 2 receives a query first. Select count after from access. Then PG2 re rewrites this query into this kind of form. Select a stuff from Python function and give this query as an argument of the function. Then this function runs a query on Presto. Then returns the result. Then it should be possible. <laughs> then I'll explain about the detailed implementation. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> so this is the review. Um, as I explained, PG pool 2 and process process scale with uh, Python function in it. They, those two are uh, the press requests. So PG put two does authentication and rewriting queries. And actually we wrote queries run on Postgres scale. But actual query itself doesn't run on Presto, uh, pre, uh, Postgres scale, it runs on Presto. So first, uh, when a client connects to a database, it sends a, a message called startup packet and to include authentication information such as database name or username. Then uh, PG pool tool, patched PG pool tool, I mean. I modified this implementation. This gets information from configuration file. This configuration file includes authentication information such as uh, access from this IP should be trusted, access from this IP should do a password of authentication, uh, that kind of thing. And also it includes uh, information about press servers. So connection from this IP should use this press cluster. Uh, connection using this username should use this press cluster, that kind of thing. Then once the authentication passed, uh, PG pool 2 connects to Postgres scale using label PQ. This is another connection. Then uh, executes those queries on Postgres scale. So in fact, here we create database, users, and functions. So we don't have to create user before. So users will be generated automatically. <laughs> then we write the SQL and force it to Postgres scale. This in fact includes uh, the rewrote information, such as database name is actually Hive, that is actually necessary to run press queries. Then that Hive database was generated right before. Okay, then, uh, clients will send a query to get metadata, table schema. In this case, uh, well, this is simplified. Actually, query will be a lot co more complicated. But uh, if there is a table, system catalog of table, PG pool can detect it. Other case, uh, <coughs> PG pool two sends a select system catalog query to Postgres scale. So this function is defined in uh, Python, I implemented it. And as an argument, it, it includes uh, address to press the server and actually database name or other uh, authentication information. This function runs select after from information schema dot uh, comes on Presto. So then it gets metadata information from Presto. And for each tables, it actually runs create table statements on Postgres scale. So this function creates a lot of tables. So metadata is there. Data is not there, but metadata is created. So if PG pool 2 just forwards the query into Postgres scale, it can read the metadata from the system catalog. 
OK, then I succeeded to fix the system catalog. Next thing is that uh, <coughs> creating from, uh, uh, selecting from regular tables. So the previous function actually created tables, but those tables don't include any data. So <coughs> in this case, first of all, PG pool detects the query does not include system catalogs. It's just a regular table. Then, in this case, uh, pgpool2 runs this query, start pressed query, and give the original query as an argument. Then this function starts a new query on Presto. Then gets the result schema from Presto. So in this case, because query is just a count, the result schema is single big int column and defines a function which returns this type, set of this type. And this function uh, calls a, py a Python function, fetch pressed query results. I needed, to, I needed this, this hack because uh, result of a function needs to be different for each query. This query returns single big int, but this query might return ID plus count, that, that kind of things. So every time I create, uh, Postgres creates a new type in temporary PG temp, and then create also a function in PG temp. Then close the function. So this PG result function was defined right before to fetch data from Presto. And return type is result type, which is also defined right before. Okay, then I wrap up the <laughs> examples. So if the query includes system catalogs, it is a uh, set up a system catalog query. Then forward the query as is. So because the system catalogs are generated on Postgres scale by set up system catalog function, it can get metadata. If the query is just a regular table access, start query first and start, uh, define a custom type and the function, which returns that set of types. Then calls the function. Otherwise, if that is begin or commit, just forward it as is. Then the query works. So I will show you some demos. So by the way, time is up to 15, OK. So here is Presto. Presto is working here. Usually we run Presto on several servers, but it is possible to run on a single server. And uh, this is this is this is Postgres SQL, which includes uh, Python functions defined. This is PG pool too. Okay. Then I connect to uh, PG pool to this using PSQL command here, yeah. then connect it. Then let's get uh, some data. First, uh, metadata, like this. Okay, as you see here, uh, this statement was issued by clients. This buckshot DM is converted into this query. Then this query includes uh, metadata uh, system catalog access. So PG pool to this patch, PG pool to detects it and convert it into uh, <coughs> which one? This, this. So this calls uh, Prestgres catalog setup system catalog. Then it runs a lot of create table statements. Then uh, metadata is ready to use. Then simply for this original query, as is. So this can get this metadata fetched from Presto. Then next runs another query, like this. <coughs> so in this case, uh, so this query is issued, of course. PostgreSQL received this query, start query, start press the query, and fetch the results. So why, here's one uh, interesting thing. Uh, this is a Presto client. This is Presto's uh, client. If we explain this query, uh, this generates those uh, query plan. So 
So tables scan from a connector. Now there's a connector called TPCH, which is used for benchmarking. Then do partial aggregation and exchange the data with other servers. Then do final aggregation and the fetch the final result. So if I do the same thing here, explain select, it gives you the presto query plan, of course. But uh, otherwise, select from PG class. This gives you possible scales query plan. So as you can see, uh, queries are running on Presto or PostgreSQL, depending on the, uh, this query. Okay. So there are some other hacks. Uh, what if a query includes multiple statements? Some VI tools, well, Tableau, Tableau runs this query. Begin, semicolon, and actual query, and commit. Uh, in this case, uh, this select part should be rewritten, but the other part doesn't, don't work on Presto. So in this case, uh, pgpool2, this part of pgpool2 parses this query and finds where is the start point of this select document, and then converts this, only this query into uh, fetch query results. Then the other, the other parts are kept as is. But in this case, what if uh, there are multiple select, real select statements? In this case, the query actually doesn't run, it fails. How about cursors? Uh, Tableau uses cursor, actually. Cursors are uh, syntax like this. Declare cursor name for select blah, blah, blah. So it also detects the select statement, where, when, where the select st statement starts then converts only that part into select from fetch query results. Then cursor also works. How about error handling? So pgpool2 starts a query using under connection and forwards the rewriting query into Presto. If an error happens when it starts a query, it needs to notice that error to clients. In that case, pgpool2 rewrites the original query into this kind of query. Uh, this is PostgreSQL syntax. Do uh, run anonymous function using this language, PG, PLPG SQL. There's a syntax called raise exception. So with this way, uh, we can tell the message and error code to clients. The final thing is uh, faking some built-in functions. In some cases, database name on post scale, fake post scale, and actual database name on Presto is different. And some BA tools, actually Chatile, uses LAN's uh, current database function to get the actual name of post scale, uh, post -scale database. But that is different. I needed to fake it. Unfortunately, uh, all functions in post scale is defined in system catalog called pgproc. And that is regular table. We can modify it. Uh, we should not do that usually, but it is possible. So I deleted, uh, when, when uh, pgpool starts uh, set up the database, it deletes current database function first. Then runs create function. This create function actually inserts a new record into pgproc. So with this way, uh, we can fake even built-in functions. Current database function is actually implemented in C, uh, built in the actual PostgreSQL source code. Even that is possible to overwrite. Somehow, by the way, update, update query didn't work. Delete and create function was necessary. Okay, some future works. Uh, PostgreSQL supports uh, some uh, Many, uh, many types, but some of them are not available on Presto. So <coughs> I, needed to, I needed to add some rules to convert those types to fit with Presto. This is necessary to improve compatibility with Presto and VIA tools. The other thing is extended queries. 
Postal scale protocol supports two kinds of query execution. One is called simple query, which starts from Q. And the other is extended query. Extended query is used for prepared statements. So prepare first and bind arguments there and run the query. So the protocol consists of three messages. Uh, but Presto does not support prepared statement. So without running actual queries, uh, it is impossible to uh, get the metadata of a prepared statement, or the, even preparing is impossible, or binding arguments is impossible in Presto. So extended query is not supported. So we need to use simple query, only simple query. But fortunately, uh, ODBC clients and JDBC client support uh, client-side prepared statement. So those clients embed the values into prepared statement on client side and just run simple query message to Postgres. But still, some BI tools directly send this message using libpg. So <coughs> to improve the compatibility with those tools, we need to implement this. And another is create temporary table. Uh, temporary table is per connection information. But Press does not have a concept of a connection. Every message is HTTP. So it's all, everything is stateless session, stateless message. When we want to, if we want to add some session variables, each, each message to Presto needs to include session information on HTTP header. So there are no concept of session on Presto. That is good to scale the system or shut down, remove instances, or put Presto behind HTTP purchase up, but uh, doesn't work with session-based concepts. So temporary table is one of them. So this does not work currently on Presto. Progress. And drop table does not work yet. Well, actually, there's a progress to implement it. So, in fact, this is done. Okay, because this is open source project. Someone sent a progress, so it's done. Okay, then uh, that's it about progress. Thank you very much. Uh, repository is here. Please check out it. Thank you very much. I think I can take some questions. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? Do you consider using something like injection groups or custom scan nodes API in Postgres as opposed to the extra components? Um, especially like the injection group early on in the execution Does it mean rewriting the query plan? Before executing it in Postgres scale? No, it's basically like when Postgres enters into its binary logic, you just kind of set up override that function from the index. And uh, it, gets, it gets two queries that the user is trying to run, and you keep double. Uh huh, I see. Yeah. So the, actually, uh, the suggestion was that uh, we, can, we can use Postgres scale components and add some extension there to. Well, I think it works. Actually, I looked into uh, PG shard code. And it uses that extension, I think, right? And it gets query plan and reveals the SQL from the query plan and sends the queries into actual regular Postgres instances. But uh, yeah, I looked into it. But I didn't use that because uh, generating query from a SQL, actually SQL string, SQL statements, from SD is difficult, especially if they have different type systems. For example, integer is not, does not exist on Presto. Presto supports only big int. Everything is big, I mean, int, short, uh, short int, uh, big int, everything is big int. So <coughs> I needed to put that kind of uh, conversion a lot because in SD, everything is ex explicitly set. So <laughs> I choose to use ANSI standard as the interface between Presto and Postgres. But I think that architecture is better eventually for, to improve more compatibility. But I hope that someone creates open source version of ODBC connector to Presto with native open source ODBC connector. I don't know who can do that, but yeah, I hope that. Thank you.